General Burnside was succeeded by General John G. Foster in command of Union troops in North Carolina. The departure of Burnside with 7,000 soldiers scrapped the plans for an attack on Goldsboro. Foster had to content himself with occasional raising with fortifying New Bern. At one point, he personally led a raid of 5,000 men to the town of Williamston, but did not reach the objective of Tarboro. Foster built massive fortifications at New Bern, erecting forts and earthworks in a very short time. The defenses even included an armored train that left New Bern daily to patrol the Atlantic and North Carolina Railroad. The Confederates were not idle. On September 7, 1862, the rebels raided Washington, fighting in the streets with a Union garrison there. During the attack, a Union gunboat's powder magazine exploded, blowing the ship up. Union reinforcements were to drive off the Confederates. Another raid on Plymouth in December actually drove the Union forces from the town before the Confederates retreated. A house in Plymouth still has bullet holes in the wall from when a Confederate sniper was holed up inside, firing at Union troops until he was killed. By December 1862, Foster had received reinforcements and began planning an attack into eastern North Carolina. On December 11th, over 10,000 Union troops marched out of New Bern. Their first opposition came outside the town of Kinston. At Southwest Creek, Confederate forces destroyed the bridge and dug in on the other side, supported by cannons. As the creek was not fordable, two Union regiments were forced to swim across and drive the Confederates away. The next day, at Kinston, they met again. Once again, the Confederates were forced to retreat back across the Moose River, burning the bridge behind them. The Confederate commander, General Nathan Evans, thought that all of his troops had escaped safely across the bridge and ordered his artillery to open fire, shelling his own men. Trapped on the far side of the noose by the burning bridge, 400 men surrendered to the Federals. After putting out the fire, the Union troops crossed the river. Evans was forced to retreat to two miles beyond Kinston. Foster sent a messenger demanding his surrender, who was told by Evans, tell your general to go to hell. Despite just receiving news of the Union defeat at Fredericksburg in Virginia, Foster decided to push on and destroy the railroad bridge in Goldsboro. Foster first sent two companies of cavalry to attack the Confederates at the village of Whitehall, 18 miles south of Goldsboro. There they clashed at night. The Union troops lit a bonfire of turpentine barrels to light their attack, but they could not overcome the rebels, who again burned a bridge spanning the noose. Much of the Union troops' effort was against the ironclad CSS noose under construction on the riverbank. The next day, the main Union column reached Whitehall, and after a heated battle they continued the march on Goldsboro. On December 17th, five Union regiments reached the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad bridge spanning the Neuse River. The Confederates had the bridge protected by artillery, but after two hours of fighting the Union troops had managed to get close enough that one soldier dashed forward with a torch and set the bridge on fire. With their mission accomplished and running low on ammunition, Foster's men returned to New Bern. On the way back, the Confederates blocked up a mill stream. When Foster's men crossed the dry stream, the Confederates opened the gates, sending millions of gallons of water downstream that drowned several Union soldiers. Foster's raid had only been semi-successful. The bridge was quickly repaired and Confederate supplies were again moving along the railroad. After the raid on Goldsboro, General Robert E. Lee sent General James Longstreet to North Carolina and Southern Virginia with extra troops to protect the supply lines. Longstreet's subordinate in North Carolina, General Daniel H. Hill, planned to retake Washington and New Bern. His attack on New Bern was repulsed, so Hill turned his attention to Washington. By late March 1863, he had Washington besieged. On April 9th, he forced Union forces attempting to lift the siege to retreat at the Battle of Blount's Creek. But when the Union gunboat ran past the Confederate artillery carrying reinforcements, Hill decided that a siege was useless because the Union could still resupply the garrison. Hill pulled back his forces, lifting the siege. After the Washington debacle, Robert E. Lee recalled the extra troops he had sent. He needed them for his planned invasion of the North, which would end at Gettysburg.
After the Confederate troop strength was lowered, General Edward Potter, Foster's chief of staff, launched a major raid. He swept through Greenville, Carborough and Rocky Mount, destroying supplies, burning public buildings and capturing prisoners. Another raid on the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad later in the year by Foster himself was repulsed at the Battle of Boone's Mill. After these raids, fighting virtually stopped in North Carolina for the rest of 1863.